Today, Tuesday, August the 11th, we celebrate the feast of St. Clair of Assisi. She was the close friend and spiritual associate of Francis of Assisi and the foundress of what is popularly known as the Poor Clares. Born July 16th, 1194 in Assisi, about 12 years uh, after the birth of Francis. At the age of 18, she was so moved by the Lenten sermons of Francis in the church of San Giorgio of Assisi that, like him, she renounced all her possessions. Secretly, she made her way to a rendezvous with Francis and his brothers at the chapel of St. Mary of the Angels. Before the altar, she put off her fine clothes and assumed a penitential habit. While Francis sheared off her long hair as a sign of her espousal to Christ. Francis arranged for her to go to a nearby Benedictine convent to be formed in religious life. She then accepted Francis' offer of a small house for herself and her companions, adjacent to the church of San Damiano, which Francis had restored. Persuaded by Francis to found a woman's community there, he then appointed her abbess about 1215, much against her will. She would govern the convent there for the next 40 years without ever leaving it. Initially, the community followed a rudimentary rule that Francis drew up for them. Later, she became the first woman to write a rule for other women, finally approved by the Pope in 1253, shortly before her death, this day, August the 11th, 1253, at the age of 59. Francis had long intended that a community of women corresponding to his fraternity should be established. In Claire, he found the partner he was seeking. She quickly attracted other women. Within her lifetime, additional communities were established elsewhere in Italy, France, and Germany. Unlike the friars, the poor ladies, as they were originally known, lived within enclosure. Claire shared Francis's passionate commitment to lady poverty. For her, this meant literal poverty and insecurity. It has been said that of all the followers of Francis, Claire was the most faithful. In the loving bonds of friendship was also a trust that Francis placed in her wisdom and counsel. According to one story, Francis asked whether he should preach or devote himself to prayer. It was Claire who urged him to go into the world, saying, God did not call you for yourself alone, but also for the salvation of others. During a period of dejection, Francis camped out in a hut outside the convent at San Damiano, and it was there that he composed his exultant hymn to the universe, the canticle of Brother Son, which surrounds this altar here in the cathedral. The way of life of those in the new order was marked by poverty and austerity and sustained itself entirely by alms. Initially, they wore no stockings, shoes, or sandals, slept on the ground, never ate meat, and remained silent unless spoken to or in order to perform a work of charity. She was then ordered to use a mattress for sleep and eat every day. In later years, Claire herself urged her nuns to moderate their own austerities while offering Christ's, quote, reasonable service 
and a sacrifice seasoned with the salt of prudence, unquote. The nuns spread to other countries and are now established in the Middle East, Asia, Africa, Oceania, and the Americas. Claire, however, never left her convent in Assisi. From the time Frances died in 1226 until her own death 27 years later, she suffered various illnesses and she was often bedridden. All the while she lived a simple but a dedicated religious life doing menial tasks. Twice, when the town of Assisi was under attack, Claire was transported on her bed to the wall of the city, while another sister carried a pyx containing the Blessed Sacrament. The armies were said to have ended their siege and fled. And this is why she is often depicted in art with a pyx or monstrance, if here behind me. Here she's depicted, presumably with her sister, also a saint, Saint Agnes of Assisi. Claire was canonized by Pope Alexander in 1255, just two years after her death. And this was not surprising, given her reputation for sanctity during her lifetime. She was buried at first in the church of San Giorgio. Her goal in life was not to be a reflection of Francis, to be like him, a reflection of Christ. Christ is the way, she said, and Francis showed it to me. The poor Clares, the popular name for her order, are considered the second of the three Franciscan orders. Because each convent of poor Clares is largely autonomous, practices have varied greatly. But generally, the poor Clares are regarded as one of the most austere women's orders of the Roman Catholic Church. Devoted to prayer, very much so, penance, contemplation, and manual work. They usually adopted the strictest enclosure, severe fasts, and other austerities. Through the centuries, Claire has become a beloved saint, demonstrated in many ways. One of the three ships of Columbus known as Nina, which twice visited Cuba, was officially named Santa Clara. The California Mission Santa Clara, founded in 1777, has given its name to the university, the city, and the valley in which it sits, now nicknamed Silicon Valley since the 1970s. Her remains having been rediscovered in 1850, were transferred in 1872 to the Basilica de Santa Chiara in Assisi. Already patron saint of embroiderers, good weather, those in childbirth, and those suffering diseases of the eye, Clear was named patron saint of television in 1959 Pope Pius XII chose her for this because he said, one Christmas Eve, when she lay sick in her bed, she saw the crib and heard singing just as if she had been present at midnight mass in the church on the other side of Assisi. Appropriately pictured here in the Umbrian surroundings of the chapel of St. Anthony, not far from her beloved Francis, Claire can continue to see the infant in the manger in his setting on the chapel altar each Christmas. Good St. Claire, pray for us. <laughs>